Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have another appearance by Magnus Josephson. Uh, after his debut on the channel only a couple of days ago with a diagonal skyscraper puzzle that Mark attempted, uh, this one has popped up on my to-do list. Um, now I suspect Mark was sitting on the skyscraper puzzle for quite a while because I know he doesn't like skyscrapers, but I love pentomino puzzles and someone in a recent comment said, can we do another pentomino puzzle? And this one apparently fits the bill. It's got more pentominoes than you can shake a stick at. Um, so I'll read you the rules in a second, but just to let you know that Fistamafel himself apparently rates this puzzle incredibly highly. So we should be in for an absolute treat. Um, now I have some news, our Arrows app, I'm afraid it's unlikely to be out uh, this week now. We are subject to the vagaries of the uh, bizarre approval processes on the various platforms uh, that we're trying to release the game onto. Um, and I think, well, I haven't heard that it's been approved. So um, keep an eye on our Twitter, which is at Cryptic Cracking, um, because as soon as I know the game's released, I will let you know there. Um, now, over on Patreon, uh, we released a bonus video yesterday for all of those of you who enjoy our cryptic crossword content. Uh, yesterday's Times crossword here in the UK was an absolute beast, uh, so I made Mark have a go at it. Um, and uh, yeah, that video's up and running on Patreon right now. And of course, many of you have been trying the sensational puzzle hunt by Matches Martinka. If you haven't had a go, please have a go. I really cannot recommend it more highly. And we have some new successful solvers uh, to tell you about. Um, so they are Oliver Walden, Anders Sorensen, uh, Daniel Dibos, I think it could be Dibos, but probably Dibos, AJ Gosling, and Ayup Aldu. <laughs> Are you joking with me here? Do I have to say this in a northern accent? Hey up, I'll do. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's who it is. Anyway, A up, I'll do. Well done to you as well. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, many constructors have told me they've been preparing setting videos for our series on how how these brilliant, brilliant Sudoku makers uh, construct their puzzles. Uh, well, there is a slot open at the moment for next Monday. So if you have a video in preparation, get it over to a sharpish. You've got a chance to take, this, take that slot. Um, with all that said, I will read you the rules of Magnus's puzzle. Here we go. So normal Sudoku rules apply. There are 12 unmarked pentomino shaped killer cages in the grid one of each possible pentomino shape. Okay, let's stop there and just remind ourselves what a pentomino is. So pentomino is a very long word to describe something very simple, but which is basically any five orthogonally connected cells. So this is a pentomino. Um, that is not a pentomino because although these five cells do touch one another at a point, they do not touch each other along long edges. So orthogonal connections requires uh, something like that, for example. That is a valid pentomino. Um, and they're saying that there's one for each possible pentomino type. So there are, in fact, 12 different uh, types of pentomino uh, if you allow for or well, if you ignore rotations and reflections. So if we say, you know, if that's an L pentomino because it looks like an L, that's clearly uh, the same pentomino for these purposes as that pentomino because this is just a rotation of this one. Let's remove that. That's now a reflection and a rotation, and this is considered the same as this. So we've got we've got to put, put I think all twelve of the possible pentominoes in the grid. So let's just remind ourselves what all of those are. I think F is the first one alphabetically, so it must go F. I, I suppose that's just like looks like that uh, there isn't a J there is an L we've already looked at that it's, it's a bit shorter than that one though it's only five cells uh, the clues in the name Simon pentomino there's no M there is an N uh, that's an N um, you have to have a bit of imagination to view the M P is much more straightforward that looks like that uh, there's, there's T would be the next alphabetically that looks like that obviously U looks like that there is a V looks like that. There is a W, we've already looked at that, looks like that. W, X, yep, looks like that. Y, looks like that. And then Z, looks like that. So that's all the different pentominoes. We've got to put them in this grid. Um, the cages all have different sums and cannot have repeated digits. 
Right, so once we if imagine this was the Z pentomino that we found in this grid. Um, in fact, let's move it down a bit because that makes it clearer that it's important, this criteria that it can't have repeated digits. So we wouldn't be allowed to, able to repeat a digit in this shape. And it mu this Z pentomino, whatever these five cells added, added, added up to, would have to be a different total to all the other pentominoes. So if the X was down here, this couldn't have the same sum as the Z. The cages cannot overlap with each other but may touch freely so it would be possible for example for this x to do that that's touching in fact it could touch more dramatically than that it could even touch in that way which i've now messed up so this would be a valid arrangement of pentominoes i think this is what this is saying a pentomino letter in the corner of a cell indicates that this cell is part of that pentomino cage right okay so that's all uh I think that's all fairly clear, isn't it? That means that cell there has to be part of the U pentomino. And I think what that means, for example, is there can't be a U pentomino over here because there's only one of each pentomino. Um, yeah, one of each possible pentomino type. So by the time you've drawn this one in, you can't have another one over there. Uh, okay, a clue. All right, a clue outside the grid indicates that this diagonal has the same sum as that pentomino cage. Oh, good grief. Um, so, how on earth do we explain this? So that's saying, I think, let me just find an example which we can talk about here. So this I, so those two squares have the same sum as this shape. So this I pentomino here, wherever it goes in the grid, it doesn't have to be vertical, but let's imagine it was vertical and taking those five cells. These would add up to something, these five cells, and that total would be the same as whatever those two cells add up to. Good, good Lord, this is complicated. Some of the clues have been replaced by question marks, uh, which indicates an unknown letter. Each pentomino cage has at most one clue of each type. I see. So if I understand that correctly, what that's saying is that this question mark here could not be an I, U, T, W, Y, or X, because this must, otherwise there would be two sort of little killer clues with the same of the same type and that's not allowed wow okay so that means that in within the grid oh that's interesting so that means within the grid this shape here can't be part of the w because otherwise we'd have two clues of the same type in the grid and that's not allowed right do have a go it's a complicated one today the way to play is to click the link under the video now i get to play let's get cracking um so maybe that's where I start then, is it? Because, yeah, if this question mark is not a W, then this W must come to this square, and now there's only one way to draw a W in. So I think that's immediately forced. This square here is part of a different pentomino, so must drop down to there at least, uh, where it's probably got options. Yeah, it's got loads of options. So... Okay. Ah, now hang on, there's a W clue here. This feels like it's going to get very difficult. So, actually this is fascinating because this W clue overlaps with its pentomino. So, we're saying, I think, that those nine cells, whatever these nine cells add up to, is the same total as whatever this W pentomino adds up to, but these cells count in both of those sums. So we can just subtract those cells from sort of both sides of the equation. And we now know that those six cells there uh, add up to the same as those two squares. Um, now that might be important because 
Uh, not quite, actually. I was just thinking, if we if we make these squares as low as we can, they would be 1, 2, and 3, which adds up to 6. 1, 2, and 3 here. So th these 6 cells have a minimum value of 12, which means that these squares have a minimum value of 12. And that, I don't think, is a restriction that we are terribly interested in. Bobbins, right, OK. And early bobbins. So let's put my W back in um, and keep looking. So we've got... We've got an X hit. All right, okay. Wherever an X hits a boundary, we could just draw it in. There's, there's no because because of the shape of the X. That is the only way you could possibly draw an X in this grid. So we will make X red. Um, ah, now U. This looks tempting, doesn't it? So the U could slot in around the outside of our X. Um, now, is there any reason why that's not possible? Let's just have a look, because I'm noticing that I've got an X little killer clue here and a U little killer clue there. Wow. Clicking all over the place. So, U... U... Ah, okay, so that's interesting. U can't be that high. Let's just let's just think about this for a moment. Let's imagine we have a pentomino. Because we can't repeat a digit in a pentomino, the minimum value of any pentomino in this puzzle is 15, because we could put 1, 2, 3, 4, we could do that. That's 15, but there's no way we can make a pentomino add to less than 15. But this diagonal here has a maximum value of 17, because if I put the two highest values I, I could do in those two squares, I would get 17. So, in fact, the U pentomino here must be a 15, 16, or 17 total. So that's going to put pressure on that shape, because that's going to... Uh, yeah that doesn't work this doesn't work that's nice okay because let's imagine that's as big as it can be that would be 17 because of this clue here now what's the maximum x can be well let's put the maximum in those three squares that would be 7 8 9 which is 24 but 24 plus 17 does not get us to the secret so this is not enough. What is the secret? Well, the secret, of course, is that if you look at a correct solution to this puzzle and look at a box of the, of the puzzle, so these squares, for example, and you add up the contents of these squares, what, what digits would we be adding up? Well, obviously, we'd be adding up the digits 1 to 9 because each Sudoku box, uh, the rules of Sudoku require uh, that the digits 1 to 9 appear in each box once each. So add up 1 to 9, you get 45. So this box adds to 45. Well, if they're 17 and x is 24, which means I mean those squares would have a maximum value of 23 then if we put a 1 here. 23 plus 17 does not equal 45. It only equals 40. So this is not the U pentomino, and we can remove it. So, so the U pentomino is either that way or that way, I think. I can't see another way of doing it. I'm probably going to embarrass myself here. But I think it's either that or that. So those squares are always part of the U pentomino. And either this one or this one is its fifth cell. And we know that it either adds up to 15, 16 or 17. So it's got lots of low digits in it. Um, oh, this is quite, this is really quite complicated, actually. So this X clue, yeah, this is this is really interesting because when these clues overlap with their pentominoes, there's all sorts of geometric maths that you can do. Because look here, these three squares add up to X. But x is also those squares. So now that's implying that this square must be, whatever this square is, must be the sum of those three squares. Because these two squares are in both counts. They're both in the diagonal and in the, in the cage. 
So this square must equal the same as whatever those three squares add up to. So this square is at least equal to six because these three squares, even if we make them one, two, and three, would still add up to six. So that square is a six, seven, eight, or nine. which oh I see yes okay and it's not eight or nine because if it was eight or nine there's still four more cells however I draw my u pentomino it's always got five cells in it so the other four cells in the u pentomino the one that are not in this square would have a minimum value of ten if they were one two three and four so if I was to put eight or nine into this square then this diagonal would have to add up to 18 or 19, which is impossible, or more. I mean, it would certainly, it, I mean, the maximum I can make those is 16 or 17. So this is a six or a seven, and these are all really low, um, and whichever one of these is in. Oh, I love this. This is, this is a lot of, this is very interesting. Um, oh, and yeah, okay, now if this is six or seven, these squares have got to include a one and a two. And they are either one, two, three, or one, two, four. Which problem is those two squares? I just don't think we have any clue what they are. But but if we know that, yeah, we now know u is sixteen or seventeen. So there's definitely a nine down here because this either adds up to 16 or 17, it's two digits. So these two squares are from seven, eight, nine, but they must, one of them must be a nine. Um, now, what on earth do we do next? I is a two digit number, so where's I? I is here. Oh, okay, there's, well, there's a simple deduction for i then. i can't be vertical now, because if it runs, if it goes vertical, it's going to run into the u. Wherever the u is, it's going to, it takes this square, which blocks the i from being vertical. So the i must come, oh, the i could go here. So the i, the i is at least those four squares. I'll make the i purple, because it can't ever get to the w. Um, so the i... The I is horizontal and it's either 15, 16 or 17. So the I has low digits in it. The Y, oh, the Y is now forced look, because the Y can't come across. So remember the shape of a Y, which is that and, it, and reflections and rotations thereof. Well, how on earth are you gonna put that square in there? You can't come horizontally at all now, the I traps it. So the, the Y has to come out. It must involve a four cell, cell string in one direction. Well, the only direction it has available to it is this one. And therefore it must be that shape. I use blue. So this is the Y. The I is now forced to take one more square. The T is now trapped. Right, so the, t the T has to sort of flip over. It can't be that shape. It can't be the natural shape of a T anymore. It's got to be an upside down T. We'll make it red. Um, so actually, these given pentominoes are fairly fixed early on. Now, what do we know now? We now know that this T is overlapping in this square with itself. So those two squares have got to be the same. Whatever those two squares sum to is those four squares. They have the same sum. So one, two, three, six, 13, at least into those two squares. So this is constrained actually, because you can't, it's actually very constrained because 13 at least into those two squares given the nine's gone and given the seven and the eight or the or the eight will also go into that domino one of seven and eight must appear here along with i suppose along with five or six 
Okay, so we can almost, this is almost forced. This is very, very tricky, this part. Oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. This square can't, here we go. Right, let's return to the value of i. i is quite a low number. It's 15, 16, or 17. Now, if we do our triangular uh, number trick, and now the triangular numbers, they're good things to learn for killer Sudoku. So what, you know, for example, a six cell cage, a six cell cage would have a minimum value of 21. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 21. So what digits must appear in a five cell cage that has a maximum value of 17? Well, you can just start deducting digits from that 21 total and, and, and imagining what the total would, would be that would be left. So if you deduct a one from a 21 total, then the minimum you could make five cells add up to must be 21 minus one, which is 20, if you don't include a one in the total. So this, this must have a one, two and a three in it, and quite possibly a four, but a four isn't quite required because if you deduct 24 from 21, you do get 17, which is a possible total here. The other way of looking at that would be to say, yeah, okay. Uh, one, two, three, five, and six. Yeah, okay. So you can do it without a four. Um, so one, two, three must be in here, which which, which is, well, what I was thinking was that's going to put pressure on this square and force it to not be minimum. And if this is not minimum, we have an interesting thing going on with our T. Because if this has a minimum value of 4, and it does, these two now have a minimum value of 11. Let's put the lowest we could in those two squares, a 1 and a 2. That's 14. So now, looking at this T total, we know those squares which have to equal those squares, have to be at least 14, which means, and we can't use a nine. So that's a six and an eight. That is absolutely beautiful. So now we get a seven, nine pair here. And we know <laughs> this, this cell does double duty because now we know this has to be a seven because I have to make those add up to 14. And the only way I can do that is if that's a seven. If this is a four, if this is a one or a two, if this is a one or a two, this has now become a nine. I've got digits all of a sudden. U is now 16, so that square can no longer be a seven. That's got to be a six. And, and with it must go one, two, three, and four. Now that digit did did something in here, didn't it? What was that? Yes, this is the this is the sum of those three digits. So that's there's no four in here anymore. So this is a one two three triple. Ah, that square doesn't quite see all three of those though. So, ah, okay. So we don't know what this is. I don't think. Okay. Um, So, so what have we learned? Oh, I know what we've, we've learned what I is. We've learned what I is because I doesn't have a four in it now. So the minimum we can make these squares is one, two, three, five, and six. And we've just, I've just done that sum in my head and worked out it was 17, which is the maximum we can put into those squares. So you can see if we were to increase any of these digits by just, just one, if we were to in increase this total by one, this would become impossible because you'd have to go double nine or, or worse, two digit numbers were. So this is a nine, eight pair, there's a nine here. That's a nine, that's an eight, that's an eight, that's a six. Eight and nine have to appear in box four on the right hand side now by Sudoku. Um, two, three. So we now, oh, now we can just place seven look in row eight because this is a quintuple.
We've got another of these clues here where y is in y is pointing at the y pentomino. Um, I'm not sure whether we can do. Oh, I was about to say I'm not sure whether we can do any more over here, but I'm noticing that this square can't be a one or a two because it already sees a one two pair in its cage the t pentomino remember forms a cage so that squares only three or five so we now almost know the value of t t is either 17 or 19 depending on what that cell is um, oh but i I was 17. Oh, I see. Hang on. Let me just. I'm not allowed to repeat cage totals, am I? I thought that was a rule. Let me just check the rules. Hang on. The cages. The cages all have different sums. Right. So this. I is 17. So that can't be a 5, I don't think. Unless I'm going mad. 14. No. If that was. If this. No. It can. It, no. It can't be a three. It can't be a three because then it would add up to 17, which would make it the same as that. So it should be a five. And now those squares are a one, two, three, triple, I think. And I don't know how to resolve this any further, I don't think. I now know that T is 19 i is 17 and i need to try and keep track of these i haven't been concentrating on this at all um u is 16 isn't it because of this six yes oh well actually it's, it's 16 because of that total which defines it and then that forced that to be a six so we've got a 16 a 17 and and a 19 Okay, okay, right, remember that, Simon. So, what does this mean? The answer is I've not got a Scooby Doo. Maybe we look at the Y next, do we? Not sure. Okay, well, let's think about the Y. So, the Y. The Y has a 7 in it. So the basic maths of this y diagonal are that those two squares are the sum of those four squares. And those four squares have a minimum value of 7 here plus 1, 2, 3 is 13. So these two squares have to add ah, right, okay, these two squares have to add up to 13. So that one can't be a 1, 2 or a 3. Um, but we don't, they could add up to more than 13 though. So this square, oh, it's still, this is interesting because this square therefore has to be a high digit. Even, no, even if this is adding up to its minimum, which is 13, this would have to be a seven, which it can't be. So that's an eight or a nine in this square, which is quite interesting maybe. Um, so we now, well, now there is, there is pressure on these three cells. They cannot really be that big. The maximum value of these two is 15. So the maximum value of these three is eight, which means there's definitely a one in one of those three squares. Now, uh, no. With a knight's move, I would be away. I could eliminate one from that square, but I don't think there is a cell. You know, none of these squares see all, all, all of these one squares. So, uh, right, okay. I'm not sure how to get a handle on this, to be honest. So I think we're going to have to look elsewhere. Where shall we look now? We shall have a look at... Maybe I'll have another look at the W, you know, because the W, when I did it before, I put one, two, and three into these diagonals. Now this one has moved up. 
I've lost two degrees of freedom as a result of this being a minimum value of five. So the minimum value of those three is now eight. I think it is eight. I can't see why I can't put one and two there. I'm not sure. So if that's eight, 14. So these have a minimum value of 14 now. So this has to be at least equal to five and it can't be five. So that is a six or a seven. So that is almost very nice, but not quite good enough. This is definitely a pressure on these six squares. I can't make any of the digits terribly high. Um, no, this, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what I'm meant to be looking at now. Um, question mark is, I suspect that square's got to be high actually, because question mark here is summing three relatively low digits. Even if I max these out, this is these three are summing to nine. Now we know the minimum I can make a pentomino add up to is 15. So this square has to be 6 or higher, and it can't be 6, 9, or 8. That's a 7. Which, oh no, it doesn't do anything. So now, does that mean I have to max these out? No, I don't. Look at that. I have to make them equal at least 4. which means they could even be double two or they could be one three or if it was adding up to 16 would that clash that would clash with you so it can't add to 16 whoa so so this does add up to 15 so these so this can't be a one this can't be a one, I don't think. It's either double two or one three, and that can't be a one. And of course, that's the most useless digit I could have removed from this square. Oh no. Oh, ah, this square, where does that go in this row? The answer is there, I think. Whatever goes in that square can't go in those three. It must be in I somewhere because it's a one or a two. So it's got to go here. That might be interesting in column seven immediately, look. So now we've got a one, two, three triple here. That's putting pressure on the square on the W diagonal. That square's got a minimum value of four now. Um, so now th this is, uh, this is, I think is gonna give us this digit because now, um, let me get this right. So now the minimum value of these three squares is 10, four, five, and one. That would be 10. The minimum value of those three is six, one, two, and three, that's 16. So those two have to add up to 16. There's no way I can make them add up to less than that. So that is seven. And these, these are, oh, this is absolutely incredible. This is a one, two, three, triple. This has to add up to 10. So it has to be four, five, one. That's no longer a one. That's a two now. That's a one by the medium of Sudoku. Two in this box goes where? It must go here, that must be three. And suddenly, yeah, that's a two, because we know it's the same as this digit. Uh, we can get rid of five from here. This is a one, three, six, triple. That's not a two. Um, now, <laughs> what does that mean? I think that means stuff probably for a lot of things. I'm, go I'm struggling to keep track of all of the ways this affects the puzzle though. Um, right, that six is giving us a one, two, three. 
there's a two here. So we can get rid of the two from there. So that's a two. This is a one, three pair. Get rid of the one, three from there. Do we know more than that? I don't know. Um, okay. That digit, what was, what was giving us this digit? Was it this diagonal? Oh goodness me. So I'm going to have to look at this again. Um, Oh, I tell you what I could do. I could just do Sudoku. Where does six go in box nine? It has to go there, look. Doesn't seem to do anything, but it's quite a nice deduction. So that, now this is three, eight, nine. One of these two squares is a three. And this diagonal is telling us that those two squares are the same as that, those two and those two. So if I put, no, 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 you can't put nine or eight here. If you put nine or eight here, you've absolutely blown up this total because you're already at 17 with those. Th well, no, if you put eight, seven and one, you're at 16 without catering for this digit. And you can't make these even add up to that, that size. So that is three, which, which means I've now got I've now got 11 plus this digit and this digit. So what are the options there? It could be two. Yeah, and it can't be four because if it's four, this has to add up to 15, I think. If that's four, yes, it would have to add up to 15 and I can't put 10 into this square. So that has to be a two. That removes two from those two squares and here and gives me a two in the middle. Two's got to be in one of two places in box four. Now, let's come back here now, because now I've got... So after all that, this turned out to add up to 13. So these have to add up to 13, which means that's an eight and that's a nine. And now we know why. Uh, I mean, we know the value of the letter Y rather than we know why just the things happen. So Y is now 22. That is hopefully adding up to 22, and it is. Uh, those two squares, look, have to be four and something. Four and nine. Oh, that's not useful. So these squares have got to be five, seven, and eight. Also not useful. Um, that square can't be a three anymore. Okay. Um, what do we do next? I've got, I've got a 15 diagonal here. I've got a 19 diagonal here, 60. So I've got 15, 16, and 19 over here. This one, we don't know what W is because it depends on what those three add up to. And we haven't got a clue about that. I is 17. Oh, I can put nine into box three just by Sudoku. Let's put it in here. So maybe, I wonder if this square is restricted. Um, so by Sudoku, look, this square has got to be, is it just five and seven? Let's double check that. We've got one, two, three, four. So it can be five. It can't be six. It can't be eight. And it can't be nine. Five or seven. Now, one of those might get ruled out. So we've got 15. It's 20 or 22. Wasn't that one 22? That one was. This one, Y, was 22. So that can't be seven, I don't think. 15 and 7 is 22. So we need to make sure x sums to a different value. So that's 5, which means there's now a 20 in the... Yeah, 20, and that's working, of course. That's adding to 20 as well. So those squares now, we know, have got to be 6, 7, and 9. What I'm actually struck by at the, as I pause to think about it is 
this must have been a nightmare to construct. Because trying to... As we go towards the solution here, we're going to be packing... How many pentominoes have I found? Six. I found one, two, three, four, five, six. I found six. And I've got the start of another one. And there's another one here, look. But I've got to put 12 pentominoes in without repeating a digit. In a way that doesn't break any of these clues and they all have different totals. I suppose you'd have to set it up at the start and then sort of take bits of information out to try and make it work. Um, two is a little bit restricted in this box. Look, that's got to be in one of two places. S ah, seven. Where does seven go in box three? It goes there. And that gives us the two. Now we can't we can't repeat the two, but there's no no pencil mark twos there, probably because of that two. What are those two squares then? They are four and eight. Ah, oh, that's useful because that four is looking there, so that becomes a three. Ah, and this square now is a five. And if that's a five, you can't put a five in the U pentomino, which adds to sixteen, because we know it's one, two, four, six, one, two, three, four, six. So this square isn't so that square must be green, and it must be a 1 or a 4 then. Which means we're going to get this square given to us as a present. That's got to be an 8. Remove 8 from this square. This 8 over here is giving us the top of, bo or of column 9. Okay. So... That felt like good progress, didn't it? I mean, it does feel like good progress, but it's still very far from... It's very far from clear what we do next. Um, I feel like I'm being incredibly daft here. What, what am I meant to do now? I haven't even got... I can't do this one, can I? Um, maybe this column, one, two, four, and five to place. Let's have a look at these squares and see what they can be. That can't be five, that can't be two, that can't be five, that can't be two, okay. So there's a certain symmetry going on, but not, not a useful symmetry. Um, This, this row maybe, one, three, five, and six to place. Those are not useful cells, one, three, five, and six. At least I don't think they are. This one, oh, <laughs> it's absolutely hopeless. Um, I'm actually running out of places I want to look. Maybe this column. Uh, so let's have a think about this. We need two, three, what do we need? Two, three, six, eight, nine. So the eight, nine here is nice actually. So that's got just got two, three, and six as an up. In fact, that square is very, ah, this square is a naked single. Okay, sorry, I should have seen that, but it's the combination of the seven, eight, nine, the two, six, and the one, four, five, all of which are different digits. There are eight different digits looking at that square. That's a three. Okay, that's fair play. That's not easy to spot, at least not for me. This three, though, is nice. Look, that gives us a three and a one. Gets rid of a one from here. Um, now, what are we doing? We can get rid of three, look, from those squares. So we're just down to ones, fives, and sixes in row two. We can, can we do more in this column now? We need two, six, eight, and nine. So that's six, eight, or nine. And so is that one because of this two here. And that unfortunately can be all of those things. So maybe we'll get rid of the nines pencil mark, get rid of the eights in the corner, leave the twos in. And 
have a pause to think again. Um, now, is there an obvious thing I'm meant to be spotting into this to do this or to make more progress? What I really don't fancy doing is, for example, I, I mean, I know there's a 15 cage somewhere. But how on earth do you place it? You can't place it yet. I don't know. I don't know nearly enough about the puzzle. Oh, dear. Um, eight can't go in that square. So eight's in one of these two cells, which is information I've just removed from the grid. I do realize that. Um, okay, <laughs> what am I meant to look at now? Um, this diagonal? I mean, there's so many degrees of freedom along there. I don't like, like the look of that either. This diagonal? Is it the W pentomino? Is that actually telling me anything? I've got 19 in there at the moment. Is there some total I'm not allowed to get to? I don't remember. Um, or maybe that's the point, actually. Maybe I've got to remind myself of what all the pentominoes add up to. Not sure. Um, or maybe it's it's more likely I'm missing some simple Sudoku. That's what I'm normally missing at around times like this. Let's check this column. What about that square? So this square can be four, five. Oh, please let that be it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This set of square sees one, two, three. So it can be four, five. It can't be six, seven, eight, or nine. Oh, okay. There's a four, five pair here, which I didn't see. So that, that does more damage. Oh, I see. One way to see that would be to notice this one, two, six triple. And that forces one, two, six into those three squares. That would be the simple way of doing that. So those squares are now seven, eight, and nine. Now, so now I've got 19. If that's a 1, that's a 2. 22. I've, had, I've seen 22 somewhere. I think it was down there somewhere. Yes. Ah, this is lovely. Okay, so now this square can't be a 1 because that would be a 2 and this W would add up to the same as Y, which is not allowed. So that's a 6. So that's a 2 and that's a 1. And now this one adds up to... Um, 26, which I haven't, I don't think we've had 26 yet. Now those three squares have got to be 3, 4 and 6. Now has this done anything for us? 2 now has to go there by Sudoku. This has become 6, 8 and 9. This square has become a 4 or a 5. What about this column now then? We need one, three, four, and five into those positions. We can get rid of three from that one and five from this one. Okay. And now we have to pause and have another think. There's a one, three, four triple in row four of the grid all of a sudden so that means the other squares have got to be six seven eight or nine which is is that interesting what might be interesting is that question mark actually i'm just looking at that because now i've got nine on there oh yeah this is very interesting because that square can't be that high so if we add up these, if we put maximums into those two squares, the maximum would be 6, 7, 5, 2, which add up to 20. But I, I'm sure I've seen 20. We've had 20, haven't we? 
Oh, this is where I'm getting confused, probably. We've got 15, that's there. We've got 16, we've got 17, that's I, I think. Have we got 18? I don't know. Is this one 19? That one's 19, and I thought we'd seen 20. Yes, I have seen 20. I'm not going mad. X was 20, so I can't max this out. And every other number below 20 has been taken except 18. 19 is that one. So T has been, t has been taken as a clue from here. You can't use T. 18 has not gone. You can't use 17. That's gone. You can't use 16. That's gone. And you can't use 15. That's gone. This has to add up to 18, which means those two squares have to add up to 9 which means that has to be a four. That is unbelievable. Four, five, four. This is, this is a five now. So that's not five, that's not five. I've now got a one, four pair in this row, look. So now those squares have also got to be six, seven, eight, and nine which means these squares have to be a four, five pair, which means that's got to be four. That's five. That's not five anymore. This five is lovely. Five and one go in. Three and one go in. That's not three anymore. A very suspicious, deadly pattern now. Oh, what break? Oh, I suppose the pentominoes can break it. So, okay. So that'll have to get broken by pentominoes. One four here means this square is now a three. One three here means this square is a six. This square is a one. This is a three. Three and six go into the grid. This four is fixing the four and nine at the bottom. Actually, this is suddenly going with a flurry. Um, that can't be six anymore. So we've got seven, eight, nine, triple here. We've got a, what have we got here? That can't be five, actually. So that must be a six. Get rid of some sixes around the grid. Lots of sixes. Uh, seven, eight here means that's a five. That can't be a six. So we've got a seven, eight, nine there. Seven, eight, nine here. Maybe I can get the sixes. I feel like the sixes are a bit have been left dangling. There's a seven there. We can get rid of that. Um, apologies if you're seeing how to do this. It's going to be another long video. I'm nowhere near finished. Even though I've nearly done the Sudoku, I've still got to fit umpteen pentominoes in here. Okay. Ones, fours. What do I do now? <laughs> oh. Uh, this was 18, wasn't it? So there's got to be an 18 pentomino. I've got a horrible feeling that the only way to disambiguate this grid from here is going to be to f figure out where pentominoes go. I suppose this four, I can't run into both of those squares from here. There's something going on here because there's too many digits that are the same. Um, what does that add up to? That would add up to thirteen twenty. That's not. Uh, that's not. That's not possible. Right. Okay. So there is a deduction here. This square has got to be part of this pentom. Oh, this is lovely. It's going to give me a digit as well. Because why does this square have to be in this pentomino? Well, it's if it's not, how are you going to build this pentomino given that you've got to take different digits? You've got an eight and a four. You could take a two. That would be fine. You could take a five. That would be fine. But the only other digit that now is available that is not used is going to be a one in this position. Or you could do it like that and have a one in this position. But you're basically using two, four, five, one and eight. 
unless you come to this square, which you can't because that's an I pentomino. So you've got to get out of those seven squares somehow, otherwise you will make a total of 20. And the only way of getting out, getting this to connect out of these two columns is to take that square. So that square comes in. Now that is a nine then, because it can't repeat the eight, which means this square is in. And that's, look at this. This is ridiculously clever. Now that square can't repeat the four. So that becomes a one. How are you going to connect these dominoes? Well, you can't make a W because that's a W. So you're going to have to make a V. And hopefully this won't add up to anything we've seen before. That adds to 24. I don't think I've seen 24. What did this one add up to? Oh, no, 26. Oh, good grief. That was a horrible moment there where I thought I got the same total. So I've got a 26. I've got a 24. And I've got disambiguation because that being a 1 means uh, that's getting rid of my 4-1 deadly pattern. And in fact, it's doing more damage than that. Look, that's become a 7. This is a gimme digit now. That's got to be an 8. 8 comes out of those squares. This 9 is giving me a 6 here. That's fixing the 6 and the 9. That's becoming an 8. Suddenly, I think we get to this position, do we? And I've got an extra pentomino now. So I've now done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've still got 5 pentominoes to put in this grid. And... Uh, I have not got a clue where to do. What am I meant to do now? Uh, I've not used this one. I've not used that one. Let's see what that adds up to. So at the moment I've got 17, 28 plus that one. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Look, how can this apply at this point in the solve? What is this digit? Well, it's not an eight, because if it's an eight, this pentomino, whatever it is, is has got to add up to 36. But if you put the maximum in a pentomino, you possibly could. In fact, in fact, that I was about to say, I think I found the pentomino, but I haven't. It could have been that, because that would have contained all of the highest digits, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, which add to 35, but that would, of course, repeat the X. So it's not that. But that means this cannot be an 8, because it would add to 36 then, and 36 is impossible in 5 cells. So that's 7, that's 8, that's 8. Oh, I've still, I still got another deadly pattern left. Um, okay, so we've still got some disambiguation to do, but we do know that somewhere in this grid is now a maximum size pentomino. There's got to be a five, six, seven, eight, nine pentomino, which I think I can see there. Look, that probably is where it goes. Um, Just see if I can see anywhere else. This is all a bit strange here because of the sevens and nines being possible in both directions. Eight, seven. Can I get a five to touch that one? I'm not sure. Five, six, seven. Oh, no. The, oh, bob, bother. There is another one. That could be another one if that's a nine. Look. So there are two places at least where you can put the five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, let's try the small ones. So I have not, I've not put, there was a 15, I think. So that's a one, two, three, four, five pentomino. I can see that could be there. Oh yeah, okay, this is, this is easier. The question to ask is where, where do you, how many ones are available? And the answer is not many. Let me just double check this. But I think we've, yeah, we have put ones in every pentomino we've placed, which is seven pentominoes. So there are only two ones, which are those two ones, unused. Now, one of these ones has to be in the 15, and one of these ones has to be in the 18. Not that one, not the eight, not that that's the 18, but I know that there was an 18 somewhere because we added it up to it. 
is that one. So both of these both of these ones are in pentominoes, and this one cannot be in a one, two, three, four, five pentomino because there's no three near enough to it. Uh, well, there's no three you can connect to that you can connect to through fours and fives. If you connect those digits together, you can do that. But how do you pick up this three? You'd have to go through one of those two squares, which doesn't work. So I think that is the 15. Let's make that gray. Now this one has to be the 18. So that's definitely in. Um, now 18 needs a two in it using our triangulation. If we take a two out of a, of a 21 six sum cage, you don't, you'd only get to 19. So you've got, you've definitely got to have the two in there. Uh, you'd have a minimum of 19. You need a minimum of 18. So this two is in. Now you don't have to have a three though, I don't think. So if you don't have a three, you could have one, two, four, five, six, which would be there. Oh no, that would be a, that would be a Y, which we've already got. So how does this work? Can you do a four, four five, six? Or maybe you can with an N actually. I was about to say no. So I think the challenge is going to be, does that three come into this or not? So if the three is in, now, no, this doesn't work. Right, okay. So one thing to remember about pentominoes is how many pentominoes use the opposite edges of a three by three block. And the answer is very few. The Z does and the W does. Now, the, well, we know that's not a W because the W's up there. So this would have to be a Z, which means it's either that, which adds up to 16 and doesn't work, or it's, uh, what's it gonna be? That, which adds up to too many, I think. 16 and six is 22. We need it to add up to 18. So the three is not in, which means the only way of getting to 18 now is one, two, four, five, and six. That one doesn't work because that's repeating the Y. So the four must be in, and it must be this four. There's no, oh, it could be that four. But if it's those two, you can't find a six that connects anything orthogonally. So it's not these two. So it is this four. If it's this five, it has to be this six, which, no, no, it doesn't. It has to be that six, which is a T, which still doesn't work. So it's not this five, it's this five. And then I think it's that six, which is the only orthogonal possibility. And it does create a shape that we haven't got. So that is an N. Wow, okay. So we have now, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've done nine pentominoes. And I've got to get to 12, good grief. So what's that one? This is another one here. Um, I'll use orange for this one. So that has to take this square. And we can see that because if it didn't take this square, it would have to repeat itself in that square. So those two are definitely in this pentomino. There's too many sevens in here. Ah, um, oh, there's too many sevens and nines. Hang on, if it took that square, isn't it just broken? It is broken. If it takes this square, it's broken because it's whether this is seven or nine, um, it's going to hit one of those digits, either here or here. So it can't take that square. In fact, it's penned in, isn't it? This is really interesting because the si yes. Okay, here is a clear way of thinking about this that I should have immediately got and didn't. But how many different digits are there in those squares? In fact, we can ignore this. It just, this one just can't be in 
because how many different digits are there in those squares? Well, in that one and that one, we can include all of these. How many different digits? There's a six, seven, eight, and a nine. So this is, this is not enough different digits to form a pentomino. So we must take another digit, and the only digit you can take is that. Once you take that, you've got to take that. You can't make an N, because we've just made an N, so that can't be in. So we must take that one, and it must be an L, and it's an L that adds up to 34, which I'm very sure we've not seen. Although we have seen... We've seen 30... We need 35, so this is not the 35. And surely this doesn't this resolve this seven nine now? Maybe it doesn't. Okay, but that's another pentomino ticked off the list. That's the L. Oh, now that L doesn't that rule out that as our thirty five? It does. So maybe it has to be that one I found over here. Um. Yeah, here's a good way of thinking about this. In the 35, we need to use a 5. Which 5 should we have? Well, that 5 won't work. That's not going to be a pentomino. This 5 doesn't work because the only pentomino we can use make from this that uses 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is that one, which is repeating that one. So we've got to use this one. This is definitely in it. Uh, I will use green. Now, it needs to take... 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and not be a repeated pentomino. So, it's got to have a 6. Which 6 can it take? That must be that one. Now, it can't take those digits. Oh, so... It... Yeah, okay, it can't take those digits. So, so it must take this digit, mustn't it? Because it can't take both of those digits. That's lovely. So it therefore takes that digit. Now it can't repeat the 8. And it, and it becomes an F by logic. And it disambiguates the puzzle. 9, 9, 7, 7. And it's an F which is perfect. And it's a 35. So we've now actually done the Sudoku. But we haven't done the final shape. So we have to work out which Bentomino is missing. Which is a... A Z. I've not put a Z in the grid. Right. Well, that's going to have to go. Oh, this is this is it. Right. It's going to have to go over here. Now, we've just said that a Z is an interesting creature because it has to take the two opposite edges of a 3x3 three three box. Well, can we put a, a Z in that shape then? No, because there's no... You can't have an op you can't have three by threes opposite one another within this matrix here. So you're going to have to take this square. Once you take that square, you've got to take that square. So this becomes the final pentomino. Once we do that, it's got to be this because it's symmetrical, and that is the final solution. I think what a puzzle that is! That is just that is just incredible, absolutely incredible. How much logic can you pack into a puzzle, Magnus? That. That is just a great, great example of setting. And it's the thing about it is it's not monstrously hard. There's no individual step that's sort of, whoa, I can't do it. Um, there are a few difficult steps, but it's just gorgeous to solve. It really is. I know exactly why Fistema Vell admires it. Uh, I admire it too. I really hope you had a go. And I hope you enjoyed it, even a scintilla as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching a longer video today. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.